Hello fellow simmers, welcome to another video from me, Mr. Cobol Man. In today's video I wanted to revisit two of my earlier videos which, referring to some of the comments I've had, have proven to be the most useful for you. These are the videos on creating a flight plan and also on selecting SIDs and stars. I wanted to bring these two together in a simple summary video that showed you how you can do this using freely available tools at no cost to yourself. It was also brought about because one of my subscribers was asking me a question on one of those videos as well. I'm just going to refer to it here because he provides a note of caution for all of us and I want you to be able to see this quickly before we take a look at the tool in question. So here you can see I've had uh, one of my subscribers, Phil Taylor, asking me about using Skyvector. And in here he says himself that he was a bit worried that he'd be playing around with flight plans but someone might be treating them as real. He had to sign up to a whole load of legal disclaimers about his flight plans. Hmm, scary stuff. And my advice to you is that if you're going to use Sky Vector, and we'll be using this shortly. Either don't create an account, in which case you won't be able to file flight plans, or if you do have an account, please ensure you're signed out of it so you don't inadvertently file a real world flight plan. As you can imagine, that's not going to be very helpful to anybody should that situation occur. What I'm talking about here is creating flight plan, selecting SIDs and stars, selecting an appropriate transition for flight simulation only. Okay, just for flight simulation. All right, caveats out of the way. Let's go and see how we can create that flight plan easily using freely available tools. So first of all, I'm off to visit ediglar.co.uk. This is a real world flight plan database. The examples I'm going to use are based here in the UK simply for ease of use. They have flights which are starting and beginning uh, and ending at all points all across the world. But for me, for this example, for now, I'm going to do a flight plan from Echo Golf Lima Charlie which is London City, to Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, which is Manchester, in the north of the UK. A nice short flight. All of the age bands for these flights are coloured grey, indicating they're fairly old, and indeed the most recent one I've got is dated 2010. But let's choose that flight. The bit I'm interested in is the flight details down here. The bit after the forward slash, the 0031, is just the estimated time on route, that's not needed for our actual route. So I'm just going to copy the bits before that. So select and control C to copy those. And then I'm going to go to Sky Vector. In Sky Vector, I'm going to paste the route in down here. And then I'm going to enter in the departure airport, Echo Golf Lima Charlie, and tab to the destination. Now note after entering in the departure, it automatically enters the standard instrument departure or SID for me, which is great news. For the destination, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, Manchester Airport, I'll tab out of that and notice again it's automatically entered the star, the standard arrival for me. And that's it. So we can find the real world flight plan through ediglar.co.uk, extract that, paste it into the section down here, Enter in the departure and destination airports and it will automatically select and enter the SID and the STAR for us. That's the real simple way of being able to do this. Sometimes it can get a little bit complicated though. And if that should happen to you, I thought I might show you how I resolved this using the same tools so you can see how you could do it for yourselves. So let's try a search now for a different route. This time I'm going to go from Echo Golf Tango Echo, which is Exeter in the southwest of the UK. And for the destination, let's choose London City Airport again. This is a route that's regularly flown by Flybe using Dash 8 Q400s. Quick search and we'll find that we've only got one route in the real world flight plan database, so I'll select that. And down here again to look at the route. 
Now, some of these routes are often preceded by this information here. This is re uh, referring only to the speed and the altitude of the route itself. We don't need that for our flight and as you know from earlier we don't need the bit after the forward slash 0102 either. So our route is Gibso Lima 620 airway to SAM and the Yankee 8 airway to Wafu. So we'll copy that and I'm just going to close down some of these other windows here. We'll go to Sky Vector and I'm going to clear out the current route that's in there as well as the current destination and departure airfield. I'm going to paste in the route that we've just selected from Eddie Glar. I'll enter in the destination Echo Golf Tango Echo and oh no SID is calculated this time. Now there's a very simple reason for that in this case which is that Echo Golf Tango Echo Exeter Airport has no published standard instrument departures. So that's the reason why one is not selected here. Normally what happens is that the aircraft will take off and they'll get immediately vectored onto their route so that they can then fly the rest of the plan that they have filed. Onto the destination then, I'm certainly expecting a standard arrival for London City Airport. It's extremely busy. So we'll enter that and nothing. Notice that no star has been entered here. Now, the reasons for this uh, primarily are down to the fact that it's not recognizing the last waypoint of your route as being a start of a standard arrival. Now, what we can then do is go and take a look at the charts to find out which standard arrivals are available and which waypoints they do start from. So to do that I'm using the NATS service here in the UK. I'll choose the London City Airport and I'm looking for standard arrivals. Coding tables of which there are many here are of no use to us. We're going to ignore those. The standard arrival charts they are useful. So essentially we've got two standard arrivals Jacko and Godlu. Vari variations of the same, but those are the two. Let's take a look at Jacko first. And looking at Jacko, we can see that we are coming well across the north of the uh, airport, which is down here. And then going out to the Jacko waypoint out here uh, in the sort of English Channel wash area uh, of the UK. So that doesn't look like a good idea for us because we're well south of uh, here. So that doesn't look like a good choice. Let's see what else we have. We have the Godlu standard arrival. Let's take a look at that. And this is coming either from... Let's have a look. That's not too bad running from Bedeck or it's coming from the very south of the uh, UK, sort of the Channel Island area here. That's no good to us. We're actually flying along here, uh, the Isle of Wight and Southampton, which is sort of over here. So this is close, but maybe we can do still better than that. Let's see if there's another Godlu for us to look at. Let's try Godlu One Golf One Hotel. And ah, this is much better. So here, in fact, ah, we're coming from the SAM VOR, that's the Southampton VOR, down to Bidver. We're skirting away from this danger area to come up around to the Godlu waypoint here in the southeast tip of the UK. Now SAM is one of the points on the routes that we've entered so far. So let's go back to that in Sky Vector. And what we'll do is we'll delete the Wafu waypoint altogether and just leave SAM. Now note that by doing that, although the distance and the estimated time on route updates, we still have no star selected. To do that, what I'm going to do is to delete the destination and then re-enter it. And having done that, you'll see that now it has selected the God All One Hotel star, which is the star that we need. Now, if I even zoom out on the map here, you can see there's our route now using 
the appropriate star. But actually there's still something not quite right here because just flying across this part of the UK is going to be quite dangerous. We need a way to get from the star to the airport. And the way that we do that is that we use a transition from the end of the star to the initial approach fix for, in this case, London City Airport. So let's go back to Nats and for London City and let's take a look at any transitions we have. So transition coding tables, great, but we don't want the coding tables, we want the actual charts. So transition arrival charts, we're going to use runway 27 simply because it's uh, easier to describe here. Uh, it work either way, but we use runway 27. And now that we can see that it takes us from Godlu down here, up through the transition, all the way to the Lavno initial approach fix for London City Airport. And if I go back and take a look at the ILS for runway uh, 27, here we are, and we can see that it takes us then from this point here, Lavno, our initial approach fix, onto the five and a half degree glide slope to land at London City Airport. So just a quick recap then, if we enter in a route and discover that it doesn't calculate a SID or a star for us, your first approach may be to re-enter the departure and the destination to see if it will recalculate them for you. If it does not, take a look at the charts for your chosen departure and arrival airports to see which SIDs and stars may be appropriate and adapt your route here as appropriate. This is going to happen fairly frequently. The um, standard arrivals for London City, for example, changed only about four weeks ago. And as a result of that, that's why the stars changed and why the route has to change as well. That's it. That's encapsulated then the selection of a SID and a star and a transition for a simple route with route plans provided through ediglar.co.uk. I hope that's been useful. Please let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm.